It turns out that Mr. Khan, the Muslim who spoke at the Democrat convention, was just a little more Muslim than the Democrats thought. And now they're trying to scrub the record. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked. Those who uphold the law resist them. Welcome to the Voice of Resistance. Here's your host, Randall Terry. When the Russian Tsarist Catherine II visited the Crimea in the 1780s, the people there thought, the leaders there thought, we can't let her see what it really looks like, so we're going to actually create a portable facade. And when she would go through the town, the facade was in front of the buildings and she would wave and people would wave and it all looked nice, it all looked pretty. The problem was, of course, it was a facade. It was hiding the wretched conditions of the day. And so we have this man, Mr. Khan, the lawyer from New York, whose son was sadly killed in 2004 in Iraq, a captain in the U.S. Army. And he was put on stage by the Democrats to speak to Mr. Trump about the Constitution and what a bad man Mr. Trump was. And, well, it turns out that he was far more of a Potemkin village prop than some of us thought. Now, as of this filming right now, I do not have the capacity, the time to go back into the web world. You see, they've taken down his website in which the press is reporting that he was associated, affiliated with the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood is a terrorist organization. Make no bones about it. And its commitment is to restore the caliph, the successor of Muhammad. The caliphate was abolished in 1924 by Ataturk, the leader of Turkey. The Muslim Brotherhood was started in 1928, four years later, with the express purpose of restoring the caliphate, restoring one huge Muslim nation, restoring Sharia law, and launching jihad. That's the Muslim Brotherhood. You can read their literature for yourself. Or you can go online, go to our website and watch the series that we did, in-depth series, on the Muslim Brotherhood. So, turns out that Mr. Khan is a Khan. And the Democrats were using him to con us, just like Potemkin Village. Now, I, I want to talk about this a minute, then we're going to go on to our election. Uh, by the way, we'll also deal with this horrible terrorist attack in London in which an American woman was murdered by a man wielding a knife. ISIS says more attacks are coming. We will get to that in the next segment. But I want to talk to you about the Potemkin village element of this, the deceit. When the internet came out early on, Matt Drudge of the Drudge Report said, this is going to finally break the stranglehold of information and news that ABC, CBS, NBC, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and AP have on the entire nation. You have to remember, see I'm old enough to remember when I would sit in front of my television with my mom and dad and we would watch the news every night, there were three stations. That's it. You had CBS with, uh, oh, good grief, the Huntley Brinkley report you had, and you had, oh, I can't believe I can't remember his name. I apologize. Um, and then if you were lucky, you had a PBS station. Then when the, um, in, in the early 1980s, CNN emerged during the hostage crisis with Iran. And this was, this was, unthinkable that there would be a cable network with 24-hour news and if you look at the sets back then look at the budget you can see why people thought oh come on well now a lifetime later for some people you're looking at untold numbers of television stations satellite tv cable tv digital tv with tons of stations locally and this this outpouring of information has effectively helped to break the stranglehold of the New York Times, Washington Post, ABC, CBS, NBC, etc. But here's the problem. People like Ruckerberg, is that how you say his name? The guy, the guy who owns Facebook. 
Zuckerberg, I apologize, folks. He is literally choking information away from Facebook users. Google has now been caught with their hand in a cookie jar more than once. They're altering the search engine numbers. So if you put in something to search it, what you think would pop up might not pop up. The gatekeepers at ABC, CBS, and NBC had left-wing, lunatic, godless children who are now controlling the internet, the flow of data. They did a story the other day that Siri, you know, the Apple, the, the iPhone, if you were to talk to Siri and say, where is Hillary's America, the new movie by Dinesh D'Souza, where is Hillary's America playing locally? She would say it's not playing locally, even though it was playing. That, that is, I don't want to use the word conspiracy because it's, 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 not, it's, in, it's not happening behind closed doors. It's right in front of you. This is deliberate. The people who are in the gatekeepers at Google with Siri, with Facebook, these are as anti-Christian, as, as Marxist, as foolish, idiotic supporters of Islam as the folks at ABC, CBS, and NBC ever were. That's what we're dealing with. And so when I talk about Potemkin Village, I'm talking about deceit. And that's what we have with this Khan, this Khan, Mr. Khan, all right, the Muslim dad and his wife standing there silent. They're con artists. They are a Potemkin village. It's all deceit. This man, Mr. Khan, believes in Sharia law. He has written articles defending Sharia law. And for those of you who don't know the threat of Sharia law, I invite you to study Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, where they are self-consciously basing their laws upon Sharia law or ISIS, okay? So this man, Mr. Khan, was put up there to get embroiled in a fight with Donald Trump. And this is where the, the here's where the wild card comes in, friends, and I don't know the answer. We don't know how foolish or how ignorant the average American voter is. We know that a lot of them are foolish and ignorant, we just don't know the depth. And we don't know how lazy they become. We know that they are watching bizarre, idiotic things online and on TV. We know that they're sated. They're full of, of sports and Hollywood and hedonism. And we don't know how much that's affected their brain and their ability to think. But when people tell us that Islam is a religion of peace and when Mr. Khan gets up and says, Islam has nothing to do with violence, these are lies. They're every bit as insidious and deceptive as a Potemkin village was for Catherine II. But with Catherine II, Potemkin village just meant that she felt better about her reign. With us, it's somebody allowing the insurgents to come and to be in a position to attack us. This type of idiocy, this type of folly, this type of deceit, actually puts our lives in danger. Because if Hillary gets her way and has a 550% increase in the number of Syrian refugees that come into this country, do the math. Do the math. Even if one-tenth of one percent of them are directly connected to ISIS and ready to kill, how many American deaths will that entail? I'll be right back. If you own a business and would like to advertise on our program, please contact us. We are currently seen on over 130 television stations from coast to coast. We air at 8 p.m. Eastern, and then all times are local. We have a lot of reach, friend, and this is an opportunity at a great price for you to get your product or your service in front of hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people. Also, if there's something that's important to you and you'd like to have a month where you just say thank you to this ministry or promote a certain ministry or a certain cause, contact us. 
Our rates are incredibly affordable. You'd be surprised. And you, again, can reach into hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of homes. We're currently seeing, in, possibly, in over 30 million homes. So give us a call, give us an email, and we'll put a commercial up for you. After one of the many Muslim terrorist attacks that have happened, Hillary Clinton tweeted this out. Let's be clear. Islam is not our adversary. Muslims are peaceful and tolerant people and have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism. That's simply not true. Islam is our enemy because Islam has declared war on us. Islam has declared war on all non-Islam peoples and nations and religions. The word Islam means surrender. Dar al-Islam is the house of surrender. Dar al-Harb is the house of war and the house of the infidels. That's us who don't believe in Muhammad and his message. So Hillary made the statement which was a bold-faced lie. And the lie keeps going, folks. Now, people are starting to break through, but I'm telling you, I need your prayers, all right? I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking at you. I'm asking you for your prayers. I'm asking you for your help. We are going to release a 10-part series called What Would Mohammed Do? Islamic Terrorism Explained. And we look at events in Mohammed's life. I'm going to play you the trailer right now. And if this looks interesting to you, I'm asking you for two things. One, I'm asking you to pray for me. And the second is, I'm asking you, as soon as this show is over, go to our website and pre-order the DVD. We need to raise money to finish it. We're, we're trying to get it done by September 11th, the anniversary of September 11th, of 9-11. So if you order one complete set, all 10 episodes plus an extras reel, $35 gift. If you want four sets, you can send them out, give them to people, $100. You might be able to give $500 or $1,000. We still need to raise about $10,000 to finish this, which when you consider how much we've had to raise, we're getting toward the end. But I need help and I need prayer. We are worn out. This material is just so dark. So here is the trailer of what would Mohammed do. I also want to speak tonight directly to Muslims throughout the world. We respect your faiths. His teachings are good and peaceful. And those who commit evil in the name of Allah blaspheme the name of Allah. Islam is a religion of peace. They are not Muslims, they are monsters. At the same time, we have reaffirmed again and again that the United States is not and never will be at war with Islam. Islam teaches peace. No, we are at war. New York. Boston, San Bernardino, Paris, Brussels, Madrid, London, Sydney, all over the world, Muslim terrorists are killing or enslaving their victims. Why? What motivates ISIS, Al Qaeda, the Muslim Brotherhood? and so-called lone wolves. The answer lies in the life of one man, Mohammed, the founder of Islam. Why do Muslim terrorists behead their hostages? Why do they murder people who satirize Mohammed in cartoons? Why do they take women as sexual slaves? Why do they have such deep hatred for the Jewish people? Because Mohammed did. Muslim terrorists have not hijacked the peaceful religion of Islam. They are following the example of its founder. Over nine episodes, we will study different aspects and events of Mohammed's life. Events that form the central motivating narrative for Muslim terrorists. In each episode, we will find out why Muslim terrorists believe their atrocities 
are ordered by God. You will learn how terrorists read ancient Islamic literature that they believe justifies their violence to non-believers. You will witness Muhammad's hatred of the Jewish people and how that continues to this very day. We will pull back the veil on the long history of sexual slavery and violence against women that has been committed since the dawn of Islam. If we hope to win this war, we must know our enemy because Muslim terrorists are already fighting to the death, whether we believe in Muhammad or not. There you see it. Every single episode of Muhammad's life that involves him in terrorist activities, what we would call terrorist activities today, we're using just their resources, just their books, just their images or their, or their, their storylines rather. We've hired artists from all over the world, hired voice actors from around the world. This is going to be an incredible production when it's done but I need your prayers and I need your help. Go to our website, please make a $35 contribution or $100 or $500 and we will send you this series when it's done and you can know that you were a part of ripping down the facade of the Potamkin village that could cost some of us our lives if we don't quickly tell the truth. I'll be right back. Friend, this program is supported by friends like you who believe in what we are doing. We run a very tight ship. Thankfully, we are on over 130 stations across the country having tremendous impact. We get emails every day. We get letters in the mail. Not every day, but almost every day. We hear from people who love what we're doing. What people don't understand is that it's sort of expensive to produce a television show like this. It doesn't require earth-shattering funds, funds, but it, it does require financial help. So I am asking you, if you enjoy this program, throw us a $10 or a $20 bill every once in a while, or even a $50 or a $100 check. You see the address there on the screen. Your gifts are not tax deductible, by the way, because we want to be able to say what we want to say regarding politics without the IRS telling us no. So if you like the program, I ask for your support. To him who knows to do good and doeth it not, King James Version, to him it is sin. If we know the truth and yet we don't possess the courage to act on the truth or to speak the truth, then what good is our knowledge of the truth? One of the reasons that I do this show is to help young men, young women, middle-aged and old, to have the courage to help them, to encourage them to act out what they know to be true. To encourage you to speak, to write, to act. Right now, there are a significant number of good people, truly good people, whose consciences or reasoning has been so muddled that they are prepared to work or to act or to vote or to not vote in this coming election in such a way that ensures that Trump loses and Hillary wins. I am begging you for the love of babies, innocent unborn babies who are being butchered by the thousands every day and begging you in their stead, just their stead alone, 
do what you can to defeat Hillary. Not, not too long ago, just before the Supreme Court case came out, Hillary was in Texas saying we need more abortions. Literally saying that, literally. More dead babies. Abortion is murder, friend, and Hillary promotes and supports murder. Donald Trump has made it clear that he wants to overturn Roe versus Wade, has given us a list of judges he would put on the Supreme Court. He even said that killing an unborn baby should be a criminal act. For the babies alone, true religion and undefiled before God and the Father is to help the widow and the fatherless in their distress. That's true religion. I'm begging you in the name of Jesus to speak to your friends. I assume because you watch this program that you recognize that we have a moral obligation to save babies' lives. I'm assuming because you watch this program that your ethical compass is, is pretty decent. That you're trying to live out your life in accordance with the laws of Almighty God. And that's awesome. But now the next step is shout it from the housetops. Letters to the editor, phone calls to the local radio station, conversations at the water cooler at lunch, conversations in church, conversations with your neighbors, with your friends. Be willing to tick someone off. There's too much at stake because if you were a baby and your life was about to be snuffed out by an abortionist knife, you would want somebody speaking up for you and saying, no, please don't elect Hillary. She wants me dead. I want to invite you to go to our website. Almost every book that I have ever written is available as a PDF online for free. We have a ton of products, training materials, tools that are available for you for free. All we ask for is that you give us your email address. That's it. So that we can stay in touch with you and yes, from time to time, ask you to support this work. So. I'm inviting you, go to the, the website. Now, for those of you who say, well, I, I don't want a PDF, I want a real book. You can get one of my books. All you have to do is pay for shipping and handling and then give whatever gift you want. And if you can't afford anything, we'll send you the book for free. Just pay shipping and handling. Why are we doing all this? Because we want to change the direction of the country and we need to raise up a fresh generation of warriors to do that. That's why we have this tool. I invite you, go to the website, see for yourself. God is sovereign. People will say it. People will say, well, you know, God let it happen. Wait, hold on a second. You need to hear me as we close this out. There are things that happen in this world that are not God's will. Remember that. Why would Jesus teach us to pray? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's why there are commandments. Don't murder. I mean, do you think that any babies are being murdered in heaven by abortion? No. It's not God's will. In fact, in the book of Ezekiel, God rebukes them about child killing and he says, you have done something so wicked, so evil that it never entered my mind. A thing that I did not command, neither did it enter my mind. Killing their babies, offering their babies to Moloch, the god Moloch. And the reason I'm saying this as we close the program is because there are some good Christian people who've been twisted in their thinking regarding the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God is, involves, he, first of all, he gave us free will. Second of all, the ultimate sovereignty of God will be shown on the day of judgment when he drags everyone before his throne, okay? Everyone is going to appear before the throne of God. Everyone is going to give an account. They won't be able to say, I didn't believe in him. I, I, I. No, that's where the sovereignty of God is shown. So in the meantime, Yes, God, for whatever reasons, lets evil things happen, but they're not his will, and we have a duty to fight them. Fight, friends, fight.